to the closing beat, everybody. Happy, happy Monday, or not Monday, it's Wednesday now. I think it was going to be uh, Wednesday again. Hopefully everything uh, sounds good there, and we're uh, up and running, ready to go. Uh, welcome to our show, by the way. It's a quick stock market update that we do. We're financial advisors here at Jazz Wealth, and uh, one of the things we like to do is cover the markets for you guys, for the customers, everybody out there. Give you an update, the good, the bad, and the ugly, what's going on here today. Big delay? All right, I thought so, because it kind of flickered for a second. Give me just a second. I'm going to try to just go crazy with it and do it. So hold on one second. Now, now, help me out. It'll catch up in a second. Tell me if that's good. Uh, I'm going to continue, though, while we're doing that, and I'll just keep tweaking it if we need to tweak it. But on the right-hand side of your screen, you actually see uh, all green. So all green on the day. Just a really, really good day for the stock market overall. Happy tax day, by the way. It's also tax day. You filed your taxes, right? Okay, tax is done. Got your last of your IRA contributions in there. Is that better? It's pretty good, right? Sound pretty. You want me to go more? More? All right. Let's go over here. We'll try it one more time. I'll go full one on it while we're doing this here. Because I think, I think I have control over it. There you go. We'll let that catch up for just a second. In the meantime, I'm going to get started and go right to it. So we'll just pop over to the charts here so uh, we can talk about the market. That way you can focus on all that stuff. You don't have to look at me uh, and maybe it'll catch up if I need to add a little bit more to it. I'll add a little bit more to it. But uh, here we go. So let's go on over to the charts. Uh, so we've got uh, that thing popping up there as well. Uh, the Russell uh, was the leader today. Uh, it was the biggest gainer overall on the day. Um, finally got itself back above the 200-day moving average, right? Finally back above the 200 day. Let's pop it up over here and uh, we can get rid of that graph for now. We don't need that graph on the thing. Uh, back above the 200 day moving average, everything looking good there. Uh, biggest contributors today were the virus sensitive names, by the way. That would be uh, your Penn National. There you go. You can see that on the charts there as well. Uh, very strong day, 18% higher on the day. You got Marriott stronger on the day as well by about 8%. And then uh, if you look at Bloom Energy, that was one of the big performers out of the uh, Russell 2000 today. Something about a hydrogen produ production plant that they got going on. And so the Russell 2000 finally waking up, looking pretty good there. We go over to the NASDAQ. Uh, you've got the NASDAQ there waking up just a little bit, about a half a percent. It was the worst performer of the day. Uh, still up 17% year to date. Uh, oops, let's go over here. Go over here for you. You got Amazon down on the day. Uh, that was one of the bigger drags on the day for a change. You got Microsoft down on the day, also a bigger drag on the day. Uh, here's a little fun fact. It's now been 43 days since the NASDAQ lost two days in a row. So if you look at the NASDAQ, uh, is that a record? Is that something interesting? What's going on there? It's actually the second longest ever on record. Uh, 48 days without having two days in a row down was the record set in 1978. If you look back to 1978, the week after uh, the NASDAQ was still up two and a quarter percent and a month after it was still up 6%. So even though the market did have those two down days, it still wasn't enough to ruin the rally overall. So good news for you guys there. And just for fun, there's only eight other times in the entire NASDAQ's history where it has been uh, more than 30 days without a two-day pullback there. So just thought I'd point that out to you if it's something you're interested in. In the S&P today, uh, money went back into the cyclical areas there. The big tech leaders kind of took a back seat here today. And speaking of those big tech leaders, the average gain, I want to show something interesting here for you. The average gain, we'll put it up on a chart below there. Uh, average gain, 41%. If you take the seven names, your FANG plus Microsoft plus NVIDIA, if you take those seven names, those account, as you can see below, for an average gain of 41%, uh, whereas the S&P, if you take out those names, has only gained uh, 10%, right? So kind of interesting there that those names took us where we're at at the moment. I put together a portfolio here just to show you. If we take the FANG, plus Microsoft, plus NVIDIA, so seven total names there. Look at the performance difference between the two. Year to date, this is just year to date, by the way. These seven stocks, uh, just incredible how they account. Basically, if you look at the S&P, it is, accounts for 8% of whatever the S&P's done. So we're still down on the year for the S&P. Actually, it's probably up by now for the S&P. Uh, in other words, if these stock, if the rest of the stocks would have performed the same way, the S&P would be up 8% on the day or on the year. So kind of interesting there. Uh, moving on to some virus news here. There you go. Cases continue to push higher. I've got the cases for you right up front so you can see them there. Continuing to move higher in more of a rocket ship type fashion. We don't want to see the rocket ship type fashion there. Not good there. Uh, we're nearing 1% of the total population in terms of cases that uh, people that have had it. 3.5 million people. Hospitalizations continue to rise. I'll point that up on the chart there for you. Not flatlining 
at all. Hospitalizations and deaths, by the way, deaths per day uh, continuing to rise as well. If I just put the deaths on the screen, you can see that slight uptick there. Positive test rates holding steady at 8% of all people tested in the United States uh, getting positive test results. And we are currently sitting at 2.16 deaths per day per million people. Uh, we hope that number goes to zero, of course, but that's currently where we're standing there. How's the audio now? Is it still behind? A little ahead? Ah, I beat the game. Okay, okay. I can work with that. Let's go back down here. I'll give it one last little shot here, and then we're going to just plow ahead. Give that a shot. See what happens there. Uh, bottom right-hand corner of your screen, you can see the FinTips videos. We've got earnings season expectations. Today's video, you got to watch it. IRS uh, created with uh, like the virus rollover. I named it that, by the way. They didn't call it that. Uh, and then on Friday, we're talking about beating your target date fund in your retirement accounts, if that uh, 401ks, things like that. And then uh, tomorrow, we're, for our customers, we are going to expand on this virus rollover just a little bit, try to help you out there. Uh, all right, we'll go over to the sector breakdown here, take a look at some of the things that are going on. You see the sectors on the right-hand side of the screen, only one of them in red today. That'd be your utilities. That was the loan holdout through the day, and it was only down a little bit, just not even a half a percent on the day. So it was positive at one point, just couldn't get it done. Look over at industrials there. You got to pop back almost to the 200-day moving average. Your biggest gainers there are going to be your airlines. Airlines getting a big boost today, 16% for American. United Airlines getting a nice boost. Delta needed it yesterday. They had their worst earnings report ever. It added 10% today, so a nice little recovery there. But don't forget, names like Honeywell also looking strong. And UPS, we happen to own this one here at Jazz, so we're happy to see that one moving higher. UPS up three and a third percent on the day. Look up here, you got a little bit of resistance heading up there, but still quite a ways to go. Another five bucks or so until we get there. Um, and transports, I, you know, they don't get a lot of attention because they're not that exciting, but they're doing really well. Here's a stock we happen to own here, Old Dominion, looking really, really strong. Uh, one of the strongest names in the sector if you're looking year to date. And J.B. Hunt, this is a trucker, already hitting new 52-week highs as well. Careful, they got earnings tomorrow, uh, so maybe something to pay attention to. Just got to be careful of stocks getting around their earnings right now with uh, earnings season underway. Uh, you got basic materials headed back to the highs here. The performance for this one is basically in line with the S&P 500 so far this year. So looking pretty good there. In the basic materials, you got Lind, that is your leader. I mentioned this one the other day as being relatively strong. And you got Echolab, second biggest contributor uh, in the basic materials today, right off the 200 day moving average. Looking over at tech, not as exciting as it has been, still added a half a percent on the day. It was one of the weakest today dragging on the market. Um, you could just see how investors have left names like Nvidia, at least a little bit, right? Apple leaving it just a little bit. Microsoft, maybe people moving on to some other areas there, running over to your cruise lines, your airlines, the sort of beaten down, waiting on the economy and the virus to kind of go away. That news today from Moderna kind of helped us out there. Uh, but that's how you know that these moves in, in names like Apple, although maybe you could argue Apple, uh, Microsoft, Nvidia, Facebook, these are all just sort of momentum type names where people are just excited to trade the big ticket items right now. Uh, MasterCard was higher on the day as well. We talked about this one yesterday off the 200 day moving average and Visa. Yep. These are tech stocks. These are not financial companies uh, back up into this downtrend here. So back into their short term resistance areas over there uh, in the tech space. Communication services was a lot of the same today. Uh, XLC will use to cover that one there. It's the same story. This is the other part of FANG, right? So inside the communication services, you've got Facebook, which is just chopping around near highs there. You got Netflix, which hit new highs yesterday or two days ago, and just kind of floundering around right now a little bit overextended. And Google, same kind of concept there. People moving money out of there, moving money into uh, other areas that are, you know, the virus sensitive things like we just mentioned. Uh, this sector is maybe a little bit better off than the tech sector because it had a little more time to consolidate near these highs. So if I, in my opinion, if you happen to be looking at these, uh, tech's got a little bit more, it's a little overheated compared to the communication services there. So something to point out there. Uh, you've got consumer staples there. Look kind of an interesting one moving back above the 200 day, looking a little bit strong overall. It wasn't one of the more exciting sectors today. Consumer staples generally seen as more of a defensive area that you would look. Uh, this was just not that type of market today, but uh, it's got its own little sloppy break out there. Not too bad. We'll go over to gold real quick. It was flat again on the day. Uh, basically, 1813 is where it finished out the day. And if you look at something like oil, added 2.2% today, trying to move out of this range just a little bit. Can't seem to get it done. But at 4113 
uh, a barrel is where oil finished up that seems like it's waking up volume starting to be a little bit more to the uh, bullish side pushing things a little bit higher there if you happen to be looking at oil moving on to the technical breakdown here today we'll just cut right to it let's get to the good stuff here and then cover some of the stocks got 31 new highs on the day about a quarter of them were all were healthcare names uh, today because of everything's going on Algen came out there uh, was the best healthcare stock performance out of all of them there uh, they got earnings on the 22nd though be careful with that one our Domino's P Pizza looking pretty good. This was the breakout play we mentioned the other day, continuing to move in the right direction. So you like to see that sort of thing. Uh, that was a good, good move there. And then the exchanges are one uh, notable to point out. Remember we pointed out last week, I believe, talking about the exchanges doing really well. And that being the area of the financials that everybody was focused in. It was a very much a stock picking sector uh, at that time. So uh, S&P Global higher and then NASDAQ NASDAQ hit new highs there as well. Uh, zero new 52-week lows on the day. And as far as the technical stocks here, we've, we've got Domino's Pizza. You've seen that one there. That one's doing well. We could probably just take that off the list. And ACLS losing a little bit of hope that this one's going to break out. Maybe it goes on a watch list. You come back, you check on a little bit later or something, but that's that one. Lennar breaking out finally looking good there. Lennar uh, with the breakout we've been mentioning over the last couple days, finally getting some steam. And Dr. Horton also doing the same thing. And remember yesterday I pointed out Lennar looked like the one that was a a little bit stronger, had a little bit more risk to reward. Today, that panning out. Investors actually noticing that Lennar adding 3%, Dr. Horton adding about half of that, almost exactly half of that. So great lesson uh, on that one. If you've been following sort of how to find these symbols, how to stalk these symbols, and how to finally decide which one's the one you want to pull the trigger on. So uh, kind of interesting there. As far as stocks in the news there, you can see we've got a handful of them we're going to cover here today. Uh, and that's something maybe interesting we can share with you. Uh, Moderna. There you go. Uh, they're the ones that had the news said that uh, virus vaccine. They're looking really good on that. Out of 45 people, they saw no side effects. Uh, everybody found a success in the, taking the uh, vaccine. And so uh, maybe a small group of people, but still, that's good news. We'll take it uh, as far as the virus goes. So that was one of your leading stocks. Was up as much as 18% on the day. Uh, it did float back down to about 8%. People took some profits, a little extended in the short term. Uh, you got Tesla there. You've got uh, in Texas, uh, what was it Travis County? Uh, they approve the subsidies if Tesla wants to come and build uh, the electronic uh, vehicle plant there. So uh, Tesla just a touch higher on the day. Uh, good news keeps rolling for them. Looking good. Wells Fargo, they had their earnings yesterday. Not real good. The CFO says he didn't expect to cut the dividend all the way, but they, they pretty much did. Ten cents is not really all that much. So I don't know if that's exciting. Uh, biotech, just something to point out there. It's an ETF actually, but I thought it was kind of an interesting uh, one to look at. Hitting new highs, and that one was in the news today. Uh, out of the biotech stocks here, you've got a couple interesting things. Principal Bio, uh, these guys got an upgrade uh, on their... Um, They've got a, a muscular sclerosis uh, drug that's in phase three trials there. Not really something everybody's talking about right now, but that's the reason for the pop on that one. Real exciting there. Guggenheim put their price target at 100, which as you can see on the charts there is officially off the charts, right? So that was one of the standout stocks in that category here today. And Netflix is where we'll wrap things up for this here. Uh, they've got earnings on Thursday. This is one of the most volatile stocks in uh, as far as earnings go. Uh, they're expected to report record earnings uh, and revenue as well so they've set the bar pretty high um look let's go over to it uh netflix up 60 percent year to date uh, it's the sixth biggest contributor to the nasdaq's gains so if you were to use that and say well what's helped the nasdaq move higher today uh well it's the sixth biggest contributor right so it has done its fair share of work there uh it's the fifth biggest contributor in the s p 500 you guys know that it's been the bigger mover there there are officially only three other stocks that are more volatile than netflix on earnings and the key today the lesson is volatility right so netflix very volatile stock that's going to report tomorrow uh after hours and uh, the three other stocks, by the way, do you care? Akamai, there's a semiconductor stock in there. Intuitive Surgical, ISRG is the ticker symbol. Had a great day today, by the way. Uh, and then the other one is Booking Holdings. Where's my little thing is off? Uh, Booking Holdings above the 200-day moving average today. Those three are the only three names that are more volatile on earnings than uh, Netflix goes there. Um, here's the problem, though, with Netflix. And I'm going to share this here with you real quick. Netflix doesn't have the best second quarters. Tomorrow they will report second quarter earnings. The average gap is 4.3%. It's only positive 22% of the time, as you can see on our fancy new chart here. Uh, the second quarter is a real tough one here. You can see for them to try to beat uh, on revenue. It's a tough one. They've already set the bar quite high. Uh, it's also the worst 
outperforming stock on earnings day in the S&P 500, losing an average of 6.11%. So this is a very tough stock to trade on earnings. I just wanted to point that out. Uh, that's gonna be coming up tomorrow. If you own it, you expect the volatility. You don't panic because of the volatility. You expect it and you play along with it. Volume's good or everything's good? A little bit better? Oh, I'm ahead now. Maybe my computer was just like, hey, I, I don't know, we're, we're not gonna, and then all of a sudden it's decided it's gonna mess with you. So if I go back to zero here, give it a second to update, we'll see what happens there. Anyways, Netflix, uh, just be careful, right? If you're playing this one because of earnings, know what you're getting into. Know that the options market have priced in the volatility. They're no dummies. They know it's going to be a volatile, volatile move for Netflix, and we'll keep track of it. We'll be playing along with you here to see what's going on. Uh, Couple others, and then I'll move on. Uh, Sirius, great day today. Six percent gain on the day. They're going to do a. a they're they're going to buy back more shares than they were to the tune of two billion dollars. So apparently, no issues there for Sirius. And then, as far as earnings coming up tomorrow, I mentioned Netflix, but in the morning. We've got Abbott Labs, we've got uh, Bank of America, Schwab, Domino's Pizza, that'll be interesting, Johnson & Johnson, Morgan Stanley to wrap up our uh, uh, financial week of earnings. They always kind of kick things off in the beginning there. And uh, well, I mean, that's that's nice to see. So we'll be keeping an eye on that as well. And then we got dividends from uh, PNC Bank, $1.15. How's PNC doing? One of the regional banks there. PNC Bank, relatively weak compared to the market overall, so still working on that. Um, yeah, you know, we'll see what happens there. They've got earnings and then, uh, I'm sorry, they've got uh, a dividend coming out of $1.15. And then you got Patterson, the energy company, they're paying out 26 cents and we're good now, right? Yeah, we're doing good now. I know it. I could tell. I'll answer your questions here while you're typing the questions. I'll get confirmation on that and uh, we'll see what's going on. The Starbucks in your area was closed for cleaning uh, and there was still several cars driving through the door <laughs> it was closed and there are people still waiting outside I need my coffee the Starbucks uh, kind of on my new route to come here from uh, to work the the it wraps around the drive-through goes out into the main intersection down the road they have to put cones out into the road uh, it's incredible it's incredible there Yep. Oh, Taiwan Semiconductors. Yeah, good catch there. They've got earnings tomorrow expected at $3.21. That is the biggest uh, the biggest semiconductor stock in the semiconductors, right? Semiconductors have been really strong. That could either help things continue or just brutalize that, that area there. So we'll see what's going on. How are we doing? Oh, it's just going to be off today. Is it ahead or below? Or? Now I'm behind. Okay. I, I made a big change there. I'm going to make one last shot at this. We're going to hit this guy. I'm going to give it one last shot while I answer uh, the questions that we have here. You see in the rotation into bank stocks, today helped. Uh, I, don't, I think one day is way too soon to try to tell if we're rotating into the bank stocks. Way, 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 way too soon. Let's pull this guy back up here for you. And there we go. Uh, here's the banking stocks. They're obviously a great day. Uh, just I think it's too soon to tell. I'm not, I, would have no, I'd be guessing. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. You like your REITs there, digital realty, looking into getting into your buy range. Technically speaking, where are you headed? Let's take a look. Digital realty. Oh, your buy range must be around 140, something like that. So you're still in the middle of this uptrend. Take a look at this guy here. You get this uptrend nice and tight, right? So if you get below that, no hurry to try to dive into it. You expect to see a little selling in the, uh, at the first little break of that. So maybe you can get like the 140 or sub 140. Yeah. There you go. Thoughts on Oracle? You're looking at Oracle, huh? That's a that's an interesting question. A lot of, not a lot of people looking at this one. This is a very, very slow, slow moving stock. Got to be okay with that. Uh, I would rather buy it on the cheap versus try to buy it in a trend. It's a little bit me. I'm a little bit contrarian there, but uh, you want to feel like you at least got a good short-term price because if it goes sideways for a month, which is easy for Oracle, you just want to feel like you got a good price into it. You're not sitting there staring at a negative P&L for a month, you know? Yep. What do you think about Dow? Give me some heads up there. Back to the 200-day today. Obviously, that's going to be uh, resistance. It's, obviously, it's showing itself already today. I'd be in no hurry to buy some of the weaker stocks there in that category if you can avoid it. Yep. 
why are Visa and MasterCard uh, tech and not financial? They're actually called FinTech, and they like to be in the tech category there because they're more uh, driving more revenue based on technology and less with the transactions and things like that. So it's a little less of a financial company. It could be argued either way, but that's how they put it. You know, Is Amazon still a buy? I never mentioned Amazon as a buy at this point. You like that it's pulling back. I think it's still got plenty of room to go. And if it doesn't pull back from here, you expect to see it move sideways for a while. Keep in mind, they got earnings coming up. So you got that volatility. You expect to see the stock sort of die out and wait until earnings. Look at the last time. Well, not the last time, but one of their earnings here. They report earnings. The stock dies out. People just want to wait and see what happens before earnings come out there overall. Same thing last time. Kind of dies out here for a couple days leading into earnings. So just uh, know that that's going to happen on a lot of stocks. If you're thinking about buying a stock and they've got earnings coming up, most people would just say, I'll wait. Let's see what happens uh, for earnings there. Yep. Wall Street riding out the free markets, mainly tech's bubble until it pops out. I feel like a giant biotech stock. Uh, I mean, you can make the argument for like the top five or six names maybe, but um, other than that, they haven't really pulled away, right? So to call it like this massive, uh, you know, bubble type thing, it just hasn't really shaped up that way. Amazon started to, Tesla of course did, but uh, not really everything as a whole. Yeah, I like it. You like AMD to break out of the range there? I do. I mean, I like it as a watch list for right now. We don't know if it's going to happen or anything. Definitely a watch list. I think that's where you see the next wave of volume, the next big participation, but nothing uh, just yet. Just got to keep it on a watch list there. Yep. Uh, yeah, I like it. <laughs> it's nice. Uh, what do you think about uh, Valero in the long term there? Um, if you're trying to pick in the energy sector, is there not a better place for you to be? Is there something a little bit stronger you could be looking at? Um, I don't like the idea of picking on the weakest, one of the weakest out of the group there. So I would maybe dig a little bit more, you know? You know what I mean? You're looking at your Neo. And then lastly, we got Cigna, relatively weak there. Compared to some of the other... Uh, the other healthcare companies, the insurers, you're united, much stronger than a Cigna. So that's something, if you're trying to look at maybe which one should I be buying, is, is it really those, you know? NVIDIA, yeah, maybe a little bit uh, extended price-wise here, if you're thinking about starting a new position. I think there's no reason in the top seven names, there's no reason to start a new full position, you know? Probably something there. Well, hey, I do apologize for the uh, audio here today. It was good when we tested it, and then it changed right at the last second. But uh, we'll see what we can do for tomorrow, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Check us out on the research site, by the way, jazzwealth.com forward slash research, and uh, maybe that's something that's interesting to you. I'm going to wrap it up and uh, call it a day. You guys enjoy. We'll see you later.